Okay, so you want to take a deep dive into Requiem for a Dream. <gasps> Buckle up, because this one's going to stay with you. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's not exactly light entertainment. More like uh, a punch to the gut disguises art. Art that happens to be about addiction and its grip on people. Yeah. And their dreams. And Darren Aronofsky, this director, he doesn't shy away from any of it. Yeah. Intense visuals, you know, he's known for that. Yeah, his signature style, for sure. So, okay, we've got Harry, Marion, Sarah, Tyrone. These four characters, each one chasing a dream, love, success, you know, the whole deal. But then there's addiction, right? Like, yeah. it takes those dreams and twists them all up. Orps them, yeah. And it's not subtle. The film's structured in three parts, like summer, fall, winter. You literally see this descent mirroring the seasons. Days get shorter, colder. Hope kind of fades away. Heavy stuff. And speaking of heavy, Ellen Burstyn, she plays Sarah, right? Her <laughs> performance. Wow. Like, you see this hopeful mom. She wants to be on TV, but she gets so lost in those diet pills and delusions. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. Burstyn, she's phenomenal. You know, there's this story, I don't know if it's true, but they say the cinematographer Matthew Libatique cried during one of her scenes. He was so moved. Really? That's <sighs> wild. Okay, but back to the visuals. Rapid cuts, split screens, mm -hmm. time lapse. It's like Aronofsky wants to put us right there yeah. inside their heads. Exactly. That split screen especially, it's like showing how their lives are breaking apart. You're seeing things from multiple angles, but it's chaotic. On purpose. Like you said, not subtle at all. And then the music, Clem Mansell, Lux Eterna, that piece, it's haunting. It's not just background music. It's setting the whole mood, like dread and unease, you know? Yeah, the music and sound design, those are crucial for Aronofsky. He wants you to feel everything they're feeling, their desperation. It's not just sound. It's psychological. You know what I mean? We've talked around it, but this film, mm. it's intense. It's bleak. Yeah. And it shows you the realities of addiction. No sugarcoating. It's not a popcorn and chill kind of movie. Yeah. You know, definitely not. It's a hard watch. But that's also what makes it powerful. You have to confront the dark side. It's not just about drugs either. It's about anything that consumes you, any obsession. And talk about commitment. Jared Lido, he loses like a ton of weight to play Harry, hangs out with addicts, yeah. the whole deal. Aronofsky even asked him and Marlon Wayans, who plays Tyrone, to avoid sex and sugar for a month. Wow. Yeah, that's dedication. Goes to show the kind of story this is, how it draws people in, compels them to explore the darker side of things, the tough stuff. So yeah, Requiem for a Dream. Yeah. Masterpiece. Absolutely. Easy to watch. Not so much. This is a film that'll make you think, feel, maybe even make you examine your own relationship with desire and addiction. You know, those things we all struggle with. Right. It definitely gives you a lot to chew on. I mean, how does it compare to other films about addiction? What makes it so unique? And the big one, can it help us understand our own desires, our own vulnerabilities? Big questions. Definitely something to think about. Food for thought. Absolutely.